Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to this YouTube channel. It's your guy Igor here. Guys, Donald Trump has won. And what does it mean for Canada? Well, Canada can be screwed by this situation because the United States has like 18 million of illegal immigrants. That is literally more than half of population of Canada. Imagine them all crossing the border. Or even if you take 10% of them, it's going to be a huge significant change you know we are talking about housing affordability inflation cost of living just imagine that were to happen and a lot of people you know on my previous video guys i actually lost like 50 uh, subscribers on my previous video after i, I you know i think that was the cause because uh, youtube analytics saying i lost people last to uh, you know in the last month because i said that canada has spineless government and I'm going to say it again. I think Canada has a spineless government, especially the liberal government. Yes, you can see what has happened in the United States with all of the changes that are that are happening. You see, look at this, guys. Uh, basically, what we have is that liberal government and Sean Fraser, you know, together, like Justin Trudeau and Sean Fraser, has destroyed our entire immigration system. So now, uh, with all the things that have been going on, we have caused an irreversible damage to, to Canadian economy. And now, guys, because I mentioned in my previous video that, well, I support conservatives, a lot of people didn't like it, but I'm going to say it again, I think, just like, you know, Elon Musk just recently tweeted, saying that Justin Trudeau is going to be gone by, ne uh, by next election for sure well <laughs> let's see guys how that turn, turns out i'm pretty sure that that's exactly how it's going to be that's the guy who actually look guys what happened in the united states so donald trump won the elections and now we have we have some significant changes of what has happened in, in inside the world so now we can see that russia has made a statement saying that they are willing to talk they are willing to talk about the peace in ukraine now we have xi jinping who is saying that we need to make peace with the united states and of course you know we have japanese uh, whoever the guy is in charge there, his name is, uh, also talks about it because he's worried about the potential tariffs from Donald Trump. Now we have Qatar as a country that has already removed those uh, Islamist guys uh, from, uh, you know, harboring them in Doha, Saudi Arabia. We have Iran who is panicking about it. We have Netanyahu in Israel who is also welcoming the change we have the entire world who is coming up and even before trump became uh, just just a president-elect he's not yet a president of the united states he's just an elect he has literally a motorboat with the machine gun in the mar -a lago where he his residence is <laughs> patrolling him with navy wait it, it's in, it's insane so this is just to show you how big of a change the government can bring you know uh, big of a like small change in the government can cause you know that's the difference you know there's already speculation that uh, you know they had a conversation they had a conversation with putin and putin is denying that of course of course he would be doing that nothing surprises me about uh, honest russian government you know they were so honest about not invading ukraine at some point as well and now they're denying the conversation with Donald Trump. And also the big thing for Canada is that, uh, you know, there is a rumor or a speculation, maybe it's true, uh, that they, there was a hint about Canada that United States would not be protecting Canada because we are not making the 2% GDP contribution to, to NATO that we were supposed to do. And well, Justin Trudeau's solution is like, we'll do it by 2032 or 2034. What, was, what the hell did he say last time? Well, we were supposed to do it by 2024. And that was the deal. And we are not there. So we are not putting in our share. And uh, Trump said, why would we protect somebody like that who is not paying up to their 10th world's largest economy? Guys, we have been going down. And even Elon Musk recently tweeted a chart of Canada and how it went down because of Trudeau. And he said that Trudeau should be gone. Now, of course, guys, Elon Musk is a controversial figure. And I, in a way, I love that guy. You know, people are raging at him. Oh, he got richer after Trump won because he was supporting Trump. Guys, like, did you get poorer from his, him getting win? No. And it didn't impact me as well. But what did impact me is the liberal politics here. Now, people are moving to Calgary, guys, because of this entire situation so much. You look at Ukrainian community, guys, because I speak Ukrainian and Russian, I talk to people and they're saying they're moving to Calgary uh, who came to, to Canada because of their situation in, in Ukraine. You know, they're saying they're saving tens of thousands of dollars on, number one, rent here, 
Number two, lesser taxes, like if they have, you know, GST, HST, right? Taxes. So people did some calculations and also some dental benefits that they get in Alberta. Okay, so the people from Toronto and Vancouver who are like came here on this visa because of the entire Ukraine situation, they're moving to flooding into Alberta now. They're saying that they're saving tens of thousands of dollars, making the same kind of money living here. And it just shows you that is that kind of income they couldn't afford living there. And it makes a huge difference. Now you would see also, uh, you, you know, if you following this channel, I've been publishing the properties that I've been buying. There's already two Ukrainian families that I helped purchase properties in Red Deer, which is one is Black Folds, one Red Deer. Uh, just recently, like I'm, I drove 180 kilometers away from Calgary. That's how far people are willing to go to save down, still have an access to Costco, still have access to amenities, work remotely, but further away to save money. People are leaving big cities now, going farther away. And some cities are growing faster in real estate prices than Calgary right now because, because of the freaking government policies, because Canadians are getting poorer, because people are screwed like that. And it's not like because they don't want to be in Calgary or something, it's not because you know, it's just because of cost of living. It's just because people want to be able to enjoy a little bit more for less. It's just because of the neglect that we had from the government right now. And it's been pretty, pretty terrible. And if you look at the chart that Elon Musk recently published, comparing the economies of Canada and US, and then there is a huge disconnect for Canada just going down. God damn it, guys. It's pretty, pretty bad. Now, I like what happened in the United States because I published in the previous video, guys, because it's, a, it's just an indicator for liberals and, well, Democrats, right? They, they kind of go hand in hand, I feel, because uh, that's what basically uh, happened in the United States with Democrats. And I, th I think we can put a correlation between Democrats and liberals in a way, even though the uh, U.S. is just a larger, more powerful economy and everything. And I want to say, guys, that, uh, you know, I think we will have a big change coming up uh, really soon. And I don't think, you know, change in comes and NDP would be able to impact anything uh, you know, like they did with this coalition with liberals together. You know, I don't, I don't think they, they, you know, like they'll be able to remove that stain of their coat for, you know, passing legislation and other things for years now with liberals as well. So we'll, we'll have to see, we'll have to see what happens. But guys, we are in a big threat right now because we have China and Russia on the border, like with Arctic, you know, because this Arctic circle is very important now. Now we also can lose protection from the United States and we have not been supporting our army. We've been neglecting our defenses and other things. And you know, the, having democracy is a way, you, like, you have to stand up for it. You have to stand up through, through the position of strength. So if you are like, you know, if you are po powerful enough not to get bullied, you are less likely to be bullied by other countries. So that's uh, why we have to, you know, do something about it. Like guys, I'm seriously saying it's a, uh, you know, Canadian Army has to be taken care of. It's uh, honestly, guys, somebody uh, from Canadian Army, uh, you know, I, I looked around how much soldiers are getting paid and things like that. And I, I was quite disappointed, to be honest. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, is that how much money they get paid to risk lives for for this country to doing such a noble job? It's, it's a very small amount of money. I was quite surprised that they don't have enough benefits that you would expect and support and uh, paychecks that you would expect. If you're willing to give away your life, you should be paid accordingly because you're literally giving away your life for, for a big purpose. That's why I think you too, we have to support Canadian Army, Canadian forces and police and this kind of organizations, guys, because that's the backbone of our country. And if we defund this, it's, it's pathetic, you know, it's pathetic. It's pretty, it's, it's pretty bad, especially what has happened with the oil industry. They're like all pollution, taxing the heat in an ice cold country. We have most polar bears in the world and we are doing a tax for heating of, of our Canadian igloo, so to speak. It's just ridiculous. And I want to say, guys, now if, if those migrants cross the border, let's get back to realities, like not speculations. We are, we are screwed. Like we, we, we will not have space for those guys. And they'll need housing, they'll start renting, they'll need jobs, they'll need support and other things. It's gonna be a huge impact for Canada. Like we, we just thought our problems are over, but we are about to see what the real problems are. And with the changes with the United States, is, look, even Mexico is willing to cooperate now with the United States about the border patrol. Like, look, the entire world has changed. It's, it's like a difference, you know, when you have a spineless leader like Sleepy Joe Biden, 
uh, you know, who needs uh, two bodyguards to, like, there are people doing some Halloween costume as Joe Biden. Kids did it. It was hilarious. And the kids, uh, he's falling down the staircase. And also, the kids are directing him where to go. Now, Trump isn't young, too. I'm just surprised how sharp that guy is. You know, I think he's in his age and he's probably sharper than me, you know, in my 35 years of age right now, which is, uh, which is pretty admirable to see that guy. I, I, don't, I don't know, guys, how he's doing it. Quite unique and uh, powerful individual, I would say. And I think, you know, we have a chance. I think, I do think we have a chance with Pierre Poliev right now. I hope so. You know, I just hope that, uh, you know, he has that. I just hope he, he has what it takes because... You know, our chances are slim right now in Canada and, you know, we cannot have, uh, you know, the economy going down again and again and again. I mean, we are focused on the right things, you know, acceptability of the culture and other things. But at, at the same time, look, guys, anything right now with current regulations can be changed into a hate speech. Anything you say against one, even if it's joke, you can get cancelled on social media by the culture, the cancel culture. You know, we have to, you know, honestly, I think it's kind of makes a... A weak society. You know, somebody, I don't know who it is, Marco Aurelius, or who was that who said that? That, uh, you know, good times make weak people, the bad times make strong people. And I think, you know, the good times have made a lot of weak Canadians in, the, in that way, in the, in the government, and they came to power. And now they created really bad times for us. And now we have to get some strong people to fix those times for us and get us out of this hole that we have been sliding into, carelessly printing money, carelessly uh, dealing with immigration policies and uh, honestly we have to deal with the corruption and uh, we have to investigate everything we have to check everything we have to make sure that uh, you know canada gets back on track and i'm quite happy especially you know that united states kind of pushes canadians to stand up for themselves even though it's a separate country you know with their own musk tweet and other things i feel they have a leverage over us and i feel that it's good for us I think whatever happened in the United States is good for us. Now we just have to do, stand up, up for ourselves and do what's good for us as well. You know, not like, you know, uh, guys, I'll tell you something. Uh, you know, people, people don't realize it. Uh, I come from a country and it happened in the United States. Just watch to Joe Rogan, where they had agents sent in to create riots. So, you know, I come from a country, how it happened in Ukraine before the invasion happened is that, you know, people were actually, you know, people were actually, for example, you know, uh, protesting, right? In downtown, everything was peaceful. The government sent its agents, paid agents, to create, create riots. They were dressed up as civilians, and they started fights and creating unrest. And that's how there were people actually shot for protesting in downtown by that president who uh, ran, ran to, to Russia. And uh, that's how the invasion of Crimea happened and everything, because he was a puppet of Russia. Guys, uh, these kind of things, they are not like one-off. They've been happening and they've been happening and they will be happening, uh, both in Canada and the United States. This guy is just going to run me over. You have to watch where you're going. You know? <laughs> People don't see me. Anyways... <laughs> Anyways, guys, I want to say that after almost being ran over, I want to say that, um, let's talk a little bit about Canadian housing. I want to say that Canadian housing is, has been, in Calgary, has been sliding down a little bit. And uh, I have currently a couple of properties for sale for you guys. I work, there's my brokerage over here. That's my contact over here if you need anything. So long story short, guys, is that I have a property in Parkdale. It's a condo, two bedroom, two bathroom right now for sale. That's still up for sale. We have showings happening right now as we speak. And there is a Sundance property also. We have lots of showings and we actually are expecting to get an offer today. It has a legal basement suite. So if you want to buy it, you have to hurry up. If you want to live in the lake community and have a basement suite. And also guys, I don't only sell properties in, in Calgary as a real estate agent. I also help people with buying properties. So don't feel shy, reach out to me for any of those real estate questions. Right now, houses have been going down in price for a couple of months. Uh, apartments have been slowing down. Canada has got us into a situation, a ridiculous housing situation where a lot of people are walked by their houses in Toronto because the prices went down, because they were over, over inflated by the Liberal government. Now they're cutting down the 
they are cutting down the interest rates. Well, let's see how that turns out. So the interest rate uh, cut number one was half a percent. We are expecting another one. Then the, uh, by December, by another probably half a percent. Let's see how it goes out. They're trying to rescue the situation and undo the damage that have been done. It's not going to be that easy. We are just in a panic mode economy right now. And uh, there is also speculation what's going to be happening in the housing market. And the speculation is that, that I already have a phone call from a person who is calling me and he's like, okay, so uh, the interest rates are cut. What's my budget? Uh, I'm like, talk to my wife. She's a mortgage broker with DLC Clear Trust Mortgages. And he's like, oh, my budget just went up. He's like, so uh, can we buy in December before anyone else is there? Because uh, if they do another cut by half a percent, their budget is going to go up. Now they can afford what they could not afford because of their incomes and because of the interest rates and the stress test. And now people's budgets are going up. And once everyone starts running, we are going to have another boom. Now we have a speculation between the realtors. Uh, some realtors are telling me Igor is going to be in the spring. And other people are saying, hey, Igor, it's going to be probably one and a half year from now. And uh, we have a disconnect between agents uh, speculating and arguing with each other on this topic. Because some people are saying that, for example, you, you know, uh, why it's going to be one and a half year after? It's because first United, uh, United States first, uh, Toronto and Vancouver is going to boom, and then those people would be able to unlock their mortgages, and then they're going to be able to get out of there or other, and go to a place which is better, which is Calgary, and then it's going to be insane market in Calgary. But other people are saying, yeah, don't wait for that. People are just going to start buying right away very soon, as soon as the interest rate cuts. Well, let's see how it goes. It's going to be a crazy spring or it's going to be crazy in a one and a half year from now. From my experience right now, guys, uh, there is another beautiful property that's going to be coming up very soon for sale, luxurious property. It's currently getting renovated for sale. It's going to be coming up for sale in one and a half months, guys. And there is one more property in Marlboro, uh, in Marlboro that's getting renovated right now. That's going to be getting up for sale uh, somewhere by the end of January as well, guys. So I'll keep you posted on this channel. If you're interested to buy something like that or invest in Calgary, uh, feel free to reach out. And this is my contact. Thanks for watching, guys. And all the best for Canada. And uh, we'll, we'll make this country, well, it doesn't have to be great, again, like United States, because we are great. We just, we've been just uh, misled for, for some years, and I will fix that. You know, guys, I didn't come to this co uh, country because it's a shitty country. I came to this country because it's a freaking best country. And it has to be better. You know, like, we have less people. We should have a better country than the United States. I think we can have a better country than the United States. We have less people. We are a little bit smaller, but we are still big, and we are united. Thanks for watching. See you soon.